Yo soy obispo David Malloy de la diócesis de Rockford y gracias por su participación en esta nuestra meditación para el miércoles de la cuarta semana de Adviento. I'm Bishop David Malloy of Rockford and welcome to this our meditation for the fourth Wednesday of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel is taken today from the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel reading that we've just heard in this week that's leading up to Christmas begins just after those famous shepherds of the Christmas scene have been told by a host of angels that in nearby Bethlehem a child has just been born who will be a savior for all the people. And they're told that they would recognize him because he will be an infant, the infant wrappings of the time, the swaddling clothes, and in his poverty poverty that is probably shared by the shepherds themselves. His bed will be the food trough of the farm animals. Interestingly, the angels don't tell the shepherds to go and see the child, to go and see this sight. But we find those shepherds in the gospel now after the departure of the angel talking to each other, and on their own they decide to go. They've obviously thought about and opened their souls to the message of the angels. It's as if heaven itself couldn't keep silent. Imagine, for example, if you had some kind of good news that had come to you, and you're so excited about it that you just had to tell someone, so you would run out and tell the first person you saw, even if it's just someone on the street, in your happiness and your excitement. Well, the shepherds are the recipients of that message of joy of the angels from heaven themselves. And so the shepherds go. They decide to go to Bethlehem and try and find and see this child. As we look around the world, don't we realize that not everyone would go? It takes faith. It takes the courage to act on it. It takes the courage to be willing, perhaps, in faith, to stand out from the crowd. All of that to come to Jesus. And many today seem just disinterested. That is a first lesson for us in our meditation, and that's to keep our faith, to keep it excited, to keep it vibrant for that child, for the Christ child, for the child that is born to us at Christmas. It may be that he too calls us in some way to leave our own fields, but whatever he asks us to do, whatever he calls us to, like those shepherds, it's worth it. A second thought is that when those shepherds come to Jesus, they accomplish there before him and Mary and Joseph, humanly speaking, nothing. They simply spend time with Jesus and Mary and looking at the child. But it is more than that, isn't it? They pray there. And in that alone, God is pleased. They have not accomplished something physical for the world, but spiritually they have entered into the calling of Christ in this case, they're the first to represent all of us, to represent the world in coming to adore Christ himself. And God is pleased with that, and he gives them then, in return, his own gifts and his own grace. 
in faith we need to understand that silence of prayer and that even if it, it seems not to be accomplishing anything active in this world, the interplay with God, his own delight in us, and his gifts are worth every moment that we spend in prayer. Finally, we're told that those shepherds go back to where they came from, and they go back changed. They're not silent. We're told in the Gospels that they glorify and they praise God. They give witness to God, telling others about him just as those angels, in a sense, couldn't contain their joy and had to tell the shepherds. The shepherds now go back and tell all of those whom they see. We might ask ourselves, do I do that? Do people see in me, in my morals, in my own language, my care for the poor, do they see a glory and a praise to God? Every one of us needs to witness to Christ to witness to that child, to tell others, not only in our words, but by every aspect of our lives and our actions. The point is simply this, we should see ourselves in those shepherds. And that's one of the great Christmas lessons. As we come up now on Christmas this week, my own greetings and particular great Christmas wishes and prayers for all of you, especially those who have so regularly joined this meditation during this time of the outbreak of the coronavirus. May God bless you this Christmas, and may God bless all of us with a safe, a healthy, and most especially a holy new year in our own souls. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith which illumines our minds may also shine through in our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth to proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.